Hello and welcome back. First of all, I would like to thank you for supporting me in doing this good job. I want you to know that I always try to bring accurate and clear information to you. The sole purpose of me creating these videos is to help you understand those concepts that you always wanted to learn. At the end of this video, if you find it helpful, please do like, comment and share. If you are new to this channel, also hit the subscribe button in right bottom corner. With that being said, let's see what we have got today. Today we are going to talk about aggressive mode. So I have received multiple comments asking me to do aggressive mode. So here it is. Aggressive mode. About aggressive mode, people are more concerned about why do we use aggressive mode? Where do we use this? And you know what are the shortcomings? So you need to you know you, you need to be able to identify when you need to do aggressive mode and when you need to do main mode. Let's give it a, you know, let's see a high level overview of difference between aggressive mode and main mode. So, main mode and I'm going to say aggressive mode here. Right. So, in main mode, to complete phase 1, it requires 6 packets to be exchanged. While in aggressive mode, to complete phase 1, it only requires 3 packets to be exchanged between initiator and responder. So that's one difference. So aggressive mode does the same thing that main mode does, brings the phase 1 up. But it, does, it just does that a little quicker in 3 packets. In main mode, the phase 1 parameters they are exchanged in parts like right? in like in first packet we send keys then phase one policies right in second packet the responder will acknowledge or it will in the second packet the responder will select the policy and send the selected policy back in the third packet we send key exchange payload and nonce in the fourth packet the responder sends key exchange payload and nonce also net d is done here in third and fourth and in first packet, NAT T is of course negotiated. So the, all, all these things are done in you know packet wise because we have got six packets to be exchanged. So we can of course take take our own time and exchange the parameters in each packet as we go. But in aggressive mode, there are just three packets to be exchanged. So everything has to go in first packet. So all the parameters, everything, it has to go in the first packet. There are only three. You send everything in the first packet and the responder will, whatever needs to be negotiated, responder will negotiate and send you in the second packet. And then in third packet, you are just done. So that way. So everything will go in the first packet. Of course, which makes it a little difficult to troubleshoot when it comes to troubleshooting. Because everything goes in the first packet. So you don't really know where is the problem. Right? While in main mode, things were, you know, separated with packet number, packet level. If you say that your uh, tunnel is stuck at MM weight message 2, you know where is the problem. MM weight message 4, you know how many packets have been exchanged. But here, everything is in first packet, so you don't know where is the problem. Let's see, where do we use aggressive mode? Is it used in site to site? Well, you can, but usually people don't, and it's not recommended to use aggressive mode in site to site and you must have seen over the time that there have been too many vulnerabilities by Cisco to disable aggressive mode if you are already if you are using it on your ASA it's more prone to attacks so where do we use the aggressive mode so this is mostly used in IPsec RA VPN remote access VPN that is done with IPsec so there are IPsec RA VPN and SSL RA VPN so SSL RA VPN is Cisco AnyConnect and IPsec RA VPN is it's a legacy Cisco VPN client which has been decommissioned 
several years ago but people are still using it because it's free but of course not very reliable right so aggressive mode is used while using ipsec ra vpn the remote access vpn technologies it's very rarely used in site to site vpn so now you know where to use aggressive mode so if you are configuring your asc to use ipsec remote access vpn then it will automatically use aggressive mode and the aggressive mode is used with ra vpn because the computers are not in a state to perform a main mode negotiation or the software that gets installed on the computer so to do a remote access vpn every computer must have a software installed like a cisco ipsec client right it was named as cisco vpn client so every computer has to have the software installed that needs to connect to our vpn cisco vpn client these softwares are not you know these softwares do not have capability to do a main mode negotiation and they do aggressive mode because aggressive mode is much simpler you don't have to negotiate too many things let's see what is aggressive mode how the packets are exchanged so in aggressive mode there are three packets sent before sending the first packet uh, let's understand one thing that diffie hellman group will not be negotiated like if you remember in main mode we used to send Teffy Hellman group right and the remote, uh, responder used to negotiate that and send it back that this is the Teffy Hellman group that we're going to use but that's not going to happen in aggressive mode in aggressive mode initiator will send the Teffy Hellman group and the responder just has to agree to it he is not allowed to you know uh, negotiate the Teffy Hellman group just has to agree to it that fine this is the Diffie Hellman group that we'll use if the responder does not agree to it then the negotiation fails both have to agree to the Diffie Hellman group immediately or fail the negotiation now why is that why Diffie Hellman group cannot be negotiated like I mentioned that aggressive mode sends all the information into in the one packet the first packet so here is what happens so let's say there is one initiator another one is responder the initiator has to send the first packet right before sending first packet it knows that it's doing aggressive mode so the initiator and responder they will never negotiate diffie hellman diffie hellman will not be negotiated between them so initiator sends if initiator sends diffie hellman and the responder just has to accept it if it doesn't match then the negotiation will fail so both have to agree to the Diffie Hellman group immediately or fail the negotiation so why why does this happen because there are only three packets initiator sends first packet responder sends the second packet and then initiator sends third packets so there is not much much room to send too many packets and negotiate the Diffie Hellman uh, the another reason is uh, you know in these three packets they in these three packets they have to do everything generate session keys right to generate session keys what do we need we need Diffie Hellman shared secret right and where is the diff how how is Diffie Hellman shared secret generated if we go back a little, little into the flashback so in the flashback if you see main mode so in the main mode when we have to generate the Diffie Hellman shared secret that was being uh, Diffie Hellman secret was generated after exchange after exchange of four packets So one two three and four packets were exchanged and then Diffie Hellman secret was generated Because after exchange of these four packets we had enough information that we could generate Diffie Hellman secret now What information was exchanged that was needed to generate Diffie Hellman? So the information was Diffie Hellman public key DS public key and the another thing that was required to generate Diffie Hellman shared secret is nonce initiator nonce right so these this information was required to generate Diffie Hellman shared secret that here in the first packet when the initiator is sending the first packet it has to send all the material that's needed for the responder to generate the Diffie Hellman shared secret so which material is needed what materials what is required to generate Diffie Hellman secret 
we need dh public key which is you can say xa and we need initiator nonce and responder nonce right so we need the element public keys and we need initiator nonce and responder nonce so that information is required to generate defi hellman secret so like i said initiator sends all this information in first packet so in the first packet initiator sends the following information one it sends cookies so initiator cookie responder cookie then it sends doi domain of interpretation which is set to ipsec tells that this negotiation is for ipsec then it sends transform payload the transform payload contains phase one proposals then it sends key exchange payload Key exchange payload contains Diffie Hellman public key, which is XA. So, since we are sending the key exchange payload in the first packet itself, that means we are sending Diffie Hellman public key. You know, Diffie Hellman is an asymmetric algorithm. So, with Diffie Hellman, it generates two keys one public key, one private key. So, initiator has initially decided to use a Diffie Hellman value and calculated its public key and private key. So Diffie Hellman has already been decided by the initiator and it has calculated a public key and private key and has, has sent only the public key. So there is no room to negotiate Diffie Hellman now. You can't negotiate it. You, you already sent the public key. Initiator has already decided what Diffie Hellman is going to use and it has sent public key for you know public key for that Diffie Hellman. The responder cannot negotiate this thing now, just has to accept it. Right, so it sends the key exchange payload. In the key exchange payload, you have Diffie Hellman public key, which is XA. And the next payload will be nonce payload. So it sends nonce payload. And that will, of course, contain initiator nonce value and identity payload. The identity payload contains the identity of the initiator. What is the IP address of the initiator? Identity. It can be IP address, host name, FQDN. So this inf this is the information that goes into the first packet. The responder receives the first packet and looks at the values that has been sent. It finds that it has enough information to generate Diffie-Hellman shared secret. So it calculates Diffie-Hellman secret. Once Diffie Hellman secret is calculated, then using that it calculates using that it calculates session key, which you remember as SKID. So it calculates a session key. Using that session key and other values, it then calculates three session keys. SKID A, E, and SKID A, D, and E. So these three session keys are gen calculated, generated. So before this, this all is happening before sending the second packet. So once the responder has a session key ID generated, it uses that session key ID and calculates a responder hash. A responder hash value is calculated. To calculate responder hash, it uses a pseudo random function of session key ID initiator cookie responder cookie pre-shared key for responder proposals and the responders id that's how it calculates the responder hash so before sending second packet responder does all these things and finally it calculates a responder hash it's time to send the second packet now. So responder then sends the second packet back. In this second packet, it will have initiator cookie, responder cookie, DOI, domain of interpretation. Then it will have selected proposals. It 
and responder hash hash r will have the key exchange payload in that it will have Diffie Hellman public key let's say XB it will be nonce payload will contain responder nonce and then there will be identity payload so that contains the identity of the responder this information goes into the second packet then comes the third packet from the initiator so after receiving second packet in the second packet with everything else it has sent the responder hash so upon receiving the second packet the initiator calculates its own value of responder hash so initiator calculates hash of the responder again and then compares it with the hash value that was sent by the responder if these two values are same then it understands that it's talking with the correct peer so the authentication can go ahead right so it verifies that thing once it's done now it starts preparing for the third message the preparation of third message involves it involves in the creation of hash of the initiator initiator hash so the initiator calculates its own hash value using the same formula that we already talked about pseudo random function of session key id initiator cookie responder cookie appreciate key of the initiator proposals and the initiator's identity so it uses these values and calculates an initiator hash and sends that hash value into the in the third packet the third packet then reaches the responder responder receives the ha initiator hash value in it the responder then calculates its own value of initiator hash and compares it with the hash value that it received from the peer if they match phase one comes up so that's all about aggressive mode so in this video you have understood that why do we need aggressive mode where do we use it what is the difference between aggressive mode and main mode and how does exactly the negotiation happen what values are negotiated what are not negotiated with this there are some problems using aggressive mode i uh, there are some issues or problems if you remember in main mode there were six messages exchanged one two three four five and six but once we were done sending four packets fifth and sixth packets the part of them the payload was encrypted while in aggressive mode we send three packets only and none of them is encrypted all are in clear text here what was the reason for fifth and sixth packet for the payload to be encrypted in the fifth packet where the payload was encrypted those payloads were hash payload and identity payload so by encrypting the, these two payloads we were protecting in the hash payload we used to send hash of pre-shared key right and the in the identity payload there was initial uh, identity of the initiator right so here that that's how we were able to protect the pre-shared key and the initiator's identity but now we are sending the identity payload in the clear text so that's one risk everything that's going over the internet that's in clear text no part of these three messages is encrypted so it becomes more prone to attacks aggressive mode with pre-shared key is more prone to attacks so if aggressive mode is being used it is recommended that you use aggressive mode plus certificate authentication and aggressive mode is not used for site to site it's only used for remote access vpns that's all for now i hope this has been informative to you and i would like to thank you for watching it it is your support your likes comments that keep me motivated for bringing up more stuff like this please let me know if this has helped you 
if you are new to this channel also hit the subscribe button and like button corner